Well, you know, the conventional way to start a woodworking project is to go down to the home center or the hardwood outlet and pick up materials that are all ready to use. But this is a story about Yankee thrift. And I got an idea from my grandfather, who, when he retired, took up woodworking. He showed me some pieces of furniture that he built from crates and pallets. So I said, why not give it a try? So the first thing I did was head down to the local warehouse where all these pallets are stacked up out back and they just want to get rid of them. So they'll give them away, brought them back to the shop. Now, I did need one critical tool, this planer. It's a surface planer. It has a heavy wheel with a couple long knives that will clean the surface of the boards up and make them nice and smooth. Now, undoubtedly, when you plane that kind of wood, there's grit in it, and even if you remove the nails, you're going to have some damage to the knives. So you have to replace the set, as I did this morning. But be careful. I nicked my finger doing that job. Now, over here is the prototype coffee table. It took five pallets, and I ended up with a little red oak, some white oak, and even some poplar, which makes up the frame. Boy, I'll tell you, that was a workout. There were a lot of nails in the pallets that I took apart, four in all, which yielded this much oak, anyway. There was some pine that I didn't bother with. Here I've got some thick pieces, which I'll use for the legs and the frame. And here I have some thinner pieces that run from about three-quarters down to about three-eighths, which I'll use for the field of the top and of the ends. Now the idea is to clean all this wood up. And I'm going to start with these three pieces, which I want to all end up to be a uniform thickness. So I'm going to surface plane the broad surfaces. Now to start, what I want to do is just take a measurement to get an idea of roughly how thick it is. It'll vary, inch and 11, inch and 11, inch and 3 quarters. So it's always better to set the planer a little bit higher. I'll even go to inch and 13 sixteenths, and I'll either take nothing or very little, and we'll keep adjusting until we remove material. Okay, now that's the thick pieces. That's not bad looking stuff. Now the next group is a whole series of boards that looks like they'll plane down to about five eighths of an inch. The process is exactly the same. Okay, well now you're looking at the pile of sawdust that I created while planing about 40 pieces of wood for my table. And believe me, they did take their toll on the planer knives, which I'll have to replace later. But the result is some boards that are nice and clean on the surface. The next job is to clean up the edges. They're still rough, and they need to be smooth and sized. So what I want to do is check the board for an average width. And these are running about 3 and 9 sixteenths. So I think I'll set the saw at 3 and a half just to remove a little bit from one edge, and I'll move the fence and clean the other side. Okay. That takes care of one edge. Now I'm going to move the fence about an eighth of an inch closer to the blade, turn them end for end, and run the other edge through. Now 
With all my stock rough milled and sorted, I'm now ready to start building the coffee table. The first thing I want to do is take a couple of these thick pieces and make some legs. Four of them, 15 inches long. Even though the edges of the stock are pretty smooth right off the table saw, I think it's a good practice to run a pass through the joiner. Now I've taken my four leg blanks and clamped them together and laid out the top edge for a rabbit, which will allow the top rail to sit flush. And down at the bottom, I've laid out for a dado for the lower rail. I've also put my stack dado head cutter in the radial arm saw and carefully adjusted the height so that it'll remove about 9 sixteenths of an inch of material. It'll take several passes. Look at the prototype for a second. The field on the end panels goes behind the rails and sits in a dado in each leg. Now to make that dado cut, I've now installed the stacked dado head cutter in the table saw. It's set up for 5 sixteenths of an inch width, which is the thickness of my field. And that dado runs just behind the cuts I made over at the radial line. <laughs> Now we're ready to start assembling the end frames. A little bit of glue, and the rails just get slipped and held flush with the edge. At the bottom. And up at the top. And I'll fasten it in place using a couple inch and a quarter nails at each location. Now on the outside face of the end panels, I'm running a decorative chamfer right along the edge of all four pieces, stopping about an inch and a half from each corner. Now using my miter box, which I've set up at a 45 degree angle, I'm cutting pieces of stock that are 5 sixteenths inch thick, they're about an inch and three eighths wide, to make the field for the end panel. And for now, I'm just going to set the pieces loosely in place. Now there's one more finishing step I want to do to these slats before I actually nail them in place. And that's to take this little plane and just chamfer all the long edges. It gives it more of a finished look. And with all the edges of the slats chamfered and now reinstalled in the end panel, I can fasten them in place using my brad nailer. I'm using three quarter inch brads and nailing into the back of the rails. You might have noticed that I wasn't very fussy about lining up the edges of the slats, and that's because I have an additional cross piece which I'm going to put on the inside. And this is the bottom one, and I want to line it up with the bottom edge of the outside rail. And I'll fasten it by using some inch and a quarter finish nails, nailing all the way through everything. Now, I didn't use any glue on any of this because the wood is going to want to expand and contract, and I want to let it do that. Now here I've cut some pieces to make a frame which will join the two ends. And they're made out of pine, which came from another pallet that I milled down. 
And I'm going to fasten the frame together using some two and a half inch screws. And this is actually a new screw we're trying here at the shop. It has little ribs down at the bottom, you can see. And that acts like a pilot drill, drilling a hole for the screw. Then on the underside of the head, there are also ribs which will countersink it flush and lock it in place. Now they claim that you can drive the screws very close to the end of a piece of wood like this and that it won't split. Let's see what it does. Hmm, pretty good. I need a little filler strip at the top edge of the end panels, and that's just so I can bring it up flush with the leg. And that'll give me a place to fasten the frame to. Well, now I'm ready to attach the frame to the ends. I'm just going to stand it up on edge and hold it in place with one of these quick release clamps and fasten it with a few screws. To provide a good base for the field of the top and to really give the table a lot of strength, I'm going to glue and nail a piece of half inch plywood to the frame and to the ends. Now the field for the top is going to be made from this 9 16 inch thick stock. I don't want to use the boards at this full 3 and an eighth inch width because the quality of this lumber and the moisture that's in it, it's going to cup very easily. By ripping it in half, I make a much narrower piece which is less likely to cup. And if it does, it'll show a lot less. But using the same techniques that I used to fit the slats in the end panels, I've cut all the pieces for the top, allowing them to overhang the plywood backing by about a quarter of an inch all the way around. I've also taken some time to sort the different types of wood. I started with some oak, then this hardwood here, which I'm not sure what it really is, but it looks a little bit like maple. Then there's some cherry, another field of five boards like the second group, and I'm going to finish it all off in oak. I'm flipping over these slats because I want to apply a coat of sanding sealer to the underside. The reason for that is because I won't be able to do that once they're in the right position on top of this plywood base. By sealing both sides of all this wood in the finished product, I'm less likely to get cupping and curling. Now this is a water-based sanding sealer. And what it really does is seals the pores of the wood and makes it easier to sand. This sealer dries pretty fast. It'll only take about 10 or 15 minutes for it to become completely dry. Well, now I'm ready to start working on the perimeter that'll go all the way around the top edge of the table. And for that, I've got four boards that I picked out at the very beginning, the best pieces I could find. This one is almost perfectly clear the whole length. That'll make one long rail, probably the front side of the table. Here's another one that's pretty good over its entire length for the back. And then these two pieces, maybe I can get one end rail out of this section and another one out of here. First thing to do is to rip them. And I want to be at about three and a sixteenth inches. Now I'll just joint both edges nice and smooth. Well, now I can show you why I left all the top slats stick over the side a quarter of an inch. That's so that they can fit into this dado that I've just milled 
in the rails. I've clamped the two long rails to the table. You'll notice that they're sticking by about a quarter of an inch. The end rails are going to fit over them. And I'm going to wrap at the ends, which makes a much stronger joint, and it also will conceal the dado that's in the short pieces. To do that, I'm going back to the radial arm, which is set up with the dado head cutter. It's also not a bad idea to put a coat of sanding sealer on the inside of the rails. While that dries, I think I'll go back and finish up the work I have to do to the top slats. I'm chamfering all the corners of the top slats, just like I did on the end slats. All right, now we can start finishing the assembly of the top. So what I'm going to do is put this long rail on and just let a couple of the slats stick over so that it'll hang there. It sets it at the right position relative to the plywood. And I'm going to take one of my end pieces and slide it out till it just fits tight in that joint, which is right there. And then I'll nail the long rail with some inch and a quarter finish nails. Okay, now I'm ready to put on one of the end pieces. First, a little glue in the rabbit. And I'll make that corner mate and slide out one of the slats to pick up the other end. Like that. First, I'll nail it into the frame with some finish nails. Okay, now I'm going to switch to my brad nailer, which I've installed one-inch brads in. I'm going to use those to nail through the corner. Now it's just a matter of slipping all the individual slats into the dado. The thing that I like best about this system is that there's no need for any nails in the top surface, which would show and have to be filled in later. Now, if there's anything tricky at all about this project, it's this step right here. I'm trying to get all these slats to fit into the dado the entire length without having them all pop out. Now that I've got five or six of the boards into the dado, I'm going to put a clamp on one end here to keep them from popping out on me again and then continue working my way down. Okay, I finally got them all cut. Now I can nail the rail in place. Now to finish off the top, I'm just going to round over the outside corner with a quarter inch rounding over bit in my router. Then we'll be ready to finish it. Well, after thoroughly vacuuming the coffee table back in the shop, I have brought it into our paint room, which is a nice area to have because I can store all my paint and it's pretty much a dust-free environment. 
And one thing that I like to do before I put any finish on a piece is give it one more wipe down with a tack cloth like this. It's just a cheesecloth that's been impregnated with a solution that makes it tacky. And that will lift any of the dust remaining on the piece. I'm going to start finishing our coffee table with a coat of sanding sealer. I want to make sure that I give it a good thorough mixing in the can. But I don't want to paint from the can. I don't think that's a good practice. First of all, when I dip my brush in to get paint, I have no place to tap off the excess. So then I'm likely to scrape it across the edge, filling the groove, which means when I go to seal the can, it's not going to seal tightly. And eventually it'll spill right over down the side. It's just kind of a messy idea. So what I like to do is actually use a separate paint bucket and pour in just about enough material to do the project. A sanding sealer is a good choice for the first couple coats. It dries quickly. More importantly, it seals the pores of the wood. And once it's sanded, it gives you a very smooth surface to apply the final coat. Now you'll notice that I'm giving a coat to everything, inside and out. Well, after two coats of sanding sealer, with a light sanding between each coat, and dusting it off, I'm now applying the final coat of a gloss polyurethane. For the finishing touch, a piece of quarter inch plate glass to protect the top. You know, I don't know what it is about this coffee table. Maybe we all have a little bit of Yankee thrift in us, but all the visitors who come through the shop want to know more about how I made it.